Hello, I'm Andy Cocktail-Dress from Co-op Culture and welcome to another of our short instructional videos for co-ops, community businesses and their development workers. In this series of videos, we are looking at financial forecasting. How do you do it? Why might you do it? What are the different methods which you can use to do financial forecasting? Which situation is that method more appropriate? In this particular video, we're looking at how you might create a profit and loss forecast using historic data and trend analysis. For more information on how you look at historic sales data and do uh, apply trend analysis to that, um, please look at the uh, sales growth videos uh, in the financial um, key financial performance indicators uh, series. Okay, so we're going to look at an example now. So in this example, we are looking um, at the sales figures for our, our friendly co-op. Um, we have the sales figures going from 2015 to 2021. Uh, and we are interested in what will happen in the next three years if um, the sales grow at, in a, at a similar rate as how they have grown, if the trend that has been uh, happening is followed. Um, this isn't a way that you would predict a, a PL forecast if, um, if obviously you couldn't do this if this was a new business because you wouldn't have the historic data. Um, this isn't a good way to predict what's going to happen if you um, if you're doing a big capital spend and you're introducing new lines, new products. If you're trying to change uh, the organisation, um, and for that you would use your marketing objectives. Um, however, if you are wanting to see what will happen if trends continue, then you then this is a good way of doing that. Also, if you are going to do a big capital spend um, and you need a baseline for future forecasts, so you, you need to know, okay, what's going to happen to our core business that we're currently doing, the business that we currently have, uh, if trends continue, then you would, you would do this to create that base and then you could add on the extra uh, the extra spends, the extra income that you will get from the big capital spend. Yeah. So to create that baseline, this is the this is the, the method that you would use. So first of all, we need to do some some trend analysis to see what has happened. Um, and we're looking at our sales growth percentage. Um, and please go and look at our sales growth uh, video to uh, to understand um, how that is created. Um, but to make a trend going forward, we use the trend function. So um, use the trend function in um, this is Libra Calc, but this would also be the same in Excel or Google Sheets. So equals trend. Um, so the first uh, variable we put in is the data that we wish to extrapolate, the data that we wish to make go forward. Um, so that for us is our sales growth figures. Press comma to go to the next function, um, the next variable. Um, we're also interested in the years that the historic data that we wish to make go forward happened. Um, and then uh, the future years that we're looking at um there's a few things that we need to do to make uh to make our life slightly easier because we're we're going to copy and paste this um this formula so the first thing we need to do is make a few cells absolute so we want to make the starting historic year absolute the starting historic uh, sales growth percentage absolute and starting historic year absolute we also wish to make the final uh, future year absolute And then we copy and paste that over. That is a prediction of what, what our sales figures are going to grow by 
if the growth follows the trend that has happened. We also are going to have to make some predictions about what is happening with inflation. Um, at the moment, if inflation is quite high, um, I think it's probably going to get higher. I made a prediction that it's going to drop to the target, uh, the target rate uh, in three years' time. I mean, I actually don't know about that, um, but as a working example, it works. Okay. So that's the trend. That's what we are, that's those are the variables that we're going to use to see what's going to happen going forward. Um, so then, what we need is uh, our historic data. Now, this is a straightforward PL report by month, um, as would be produced by any of your accounting software. So, you know, if this your accounting software will often spit out a CSV file. Um, and we just do a straightforward PL report and you get the what happened last year. Um, sorry, wrong year. Um, so what you what you want to do now is um, is take the historic uh, figures and apply them to the next three years. So the first thing I would do is um, copy. Um, the sheet. Give it the name for the predict. Give it a prediction name. I should move it to the end. Um, okay. So then, what we're going to say is that um, what we're going to the, the, the turnover and the, the, the sales figures are going to be what the turnover and the sales figures were last year, uh, the historic data that we've got, um, multiplied by the trend, the percentage increase that's going to happen. Now, um, one of the reasons why we're doing it by month is, as you can see, the monthly sales figures for our friendly cob do vary quite um have quite a large fluctuation in them um and this is um you know because it's, it's because of seasonality this is a seasonal business so um we wouldn't necessarily have to do this if uh, our business was um a, a monthly subscription business that that, that that had the same sales every month but you know if we have got if we've got seasonality or variable sales this is quite a it's very useful to do it by month. So, um, so this equals last year's sales um, multiplied by one plus um, our variable for the year, our increase for the year. So that's how we would um, that's how we would increase the sales figures um, by the predicted sales growth. So we have to add um, we have to instead of multiplying it by eight point three five percent, we're actually multiplying it by one hundred and eight point three five percent. And the way to write that um, in in spreadsheets is one plus. Um, so. Uh, and we get it, we want to make that figure absolute because we don't um, we don't want it to move when we uh, when we when we copy the data over. So then we just copy and paste that all the way to the end. Um, actually, not all the way to the end. Um, all the way to there, yeah. So that's, we've increased our turnover by, um, by the percentage. The other thing we have to increase by the same percentage, by the same predicted sales growth is our cost of sales. So it's really, really important to, um, to increase your cost of sales by the same percentage that you increase your, your sales by. So we do exactly the same thing. Um, this equals um, last year's cost of sales, multiplied by one plus 
our percentage increase. We actually wish to make this um, absolute. Um, and so now we have our sales, our cost of sales, and therefore our sales less our cost of sales, we have our gross profit. The thing that we would next take from our gross profit, um, the, the thing that we would then take from our gross profit is our overheads. Now, our overheads, because they are fixed costs, aren't going to increase in line with our sales figures, um, but they are going to increase uh, by inflation, there will be an inflationary increase in our overheads, and that's why we've predicted what the inflation is going to be. So, to then do this again, we would say um, last year times by um, our inflation prediction for the year. And we do that for all of our overheads. Um, we're just using control C and control uh, to copy and control V to paste. And now we have our um, our um, our forecast PL for 2122. Um, if we had um, depreciate, uh, we do have depreciation. So actually, depreciation probably shouldn't have uh, been altered in the same way. Um, if we have uh, depreciation or um, or interest payments on loans. Those we would actually just calculate from um, from 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 our um, mortgage calculator or our uh, capital expenditure sheet. Um, we would then uh, do the same thing again and. Just need to make that 22, 23. And make it 23, 24. And then just do the same thing. So we, in the 22, 23, we increase our turnover by, from the, our, from our prediction for 21, 22, by our prediction, predicted increase for, um, for that year, so this is just repeating exactly the same thing, but instead we're using instead of the historic data, we're using the predicted data for the first year um, to then make the predictions for the second year, and we'll do the same thing from the second year to the third year. Yeah. Copy and paste it. Um, because um, we have exactly the same layout, we can just copy and paste it now into the cost of sales. We don't have to rewrite the formula. Um, 
And again here, um, we will have to rewrite the formula because we're using a different um, metric to multiply it by. So we're using a different cell reference, one plus inflation for the year. Yeah. Make that absolute, make that variable. Increase all your overheads apart from depreciation and interest. And then you have um, your net profit predictions for the 22-23 and we're going to do the same for 23-24 um, equals uh, the latest predicted figures that we have uh, times by one plus predicted increase for this year um, make this one absolute copy and paste them over, do the same for the cost of sales line. We do our overheads equals last year, the prediction for the year before is that um, overheads times by predicted inflation for the year. Copy and paste that. Again, control C, control V. Don't include depreciation or interest. And there we go. We now have a set of um, three years PL forecasts by month um, based on predicted trends using historic data and applying trend analysis. So that was this video on how to create a PL forecast using historic data and trend analysis. I hope you liked the video. I hope you found it informative. If you did like the video, please click the like button. If you have any comments about this video or um, have any videos, future videos that you'd like to see us create, please leave them in the comments section below. Um, if you wish to be notified when we upload more short instructional videos for co-ops, community businesses and their development workers, please subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to be notified. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next video.